I'd like to talk today about a case study of Endler's guppies. Now, Endler's guppies were studied by John Endler, that's where they got their name, uh, in Trinidad. And as he looked at the guppy population in Trinidad, what he saw was that there was a tremendous amount of variation. There were very colorful guppies, there were very drab looking guppies, different colors, different sizes of spots, etc. Uh, and sometimes these different populations would be very near to each other. Just a few hundred yards downstream, the population would change its phenotype and look very different from a population upstream. So he decided to run some experiments. He was basically looking for what influences what a species looks like. Why do some animals in a species look this way while other animals in the same species look a totally different way? Now we've already known that we can selectively breed different animals for different colors or patterns. Guppies are well known for this. There's all kinds of guppy colors and patterns you can buy from captive breeding and artificial selection. But he wanted to know what were some of the natural things uh, that would happen in their wild native habitat that would affect it. So he set up his first experiment. He just basically built these big ponds. He populated them with a, a mix of guppies, brightly colored ones, dull drab ones, some with big spots, some with small spots. He put them in a pond and he had a couple different ponds. He had a pond with very big rocks as the substrate, the bottom, and then he had a pond with very, very fine gravel as the bottom. And what he noticed after about 15 generations, the predators had pretty much wiped out all of the male guppies that stood out. If they were really colorful or uh, didn't have the right type of spots, if they didn't blend in well with the background, uh, they were pretty much eaten and eliminated. So we saw the population of guppies moving and changing to emulate the background, the substrate, what's down on the bottom. As a fish was looking down, looking for something to eat, the ones that stood out from the bottom would get eaten and the ones that didn't uh, would survive and pass their genes on to the next generation. But this didn't answer why there were such pretty guppies. Now he understood why there were camouflaged guppies, but there had to be a reason. There had to be something selecting for very attractive guppies. So he took the predators out. And he started with a new mix of guppies, uh, you know, ugly ones to pretty ones, and he left them in there. And what he found out after 15 generations is that there was a female selection pressure for the prettiest guppies that stood out the most. Evidently, the female guppies felt that uh, very colorful uh, male guppies and guppies that stood out from the background had the best genes, and so they had the most breeding opportunities. And so females were impressed by color and ability to stand out from the substrate. So what he saw eventually after 15 generations is that now all the drab male guppies, the camouflaged ones, were pretty much out of the population and all the animals that um, were still alive were very brightly colored and had a lot of variation and stood out from the background. This now shows us that there are three things affecting the phenotype of this animal in nature. Now there's probably hundreds more, but this just does show that predation affects what an animal looks like. And animals will change their phenotype to escape predation. And it's just a nat it's naturally selected. The ones that can avoid predation the most efficiently are the ones that will get to pass their genes on to the next offspring. We also see a female selection pressure looking for the best looking, biggest, most robust, most standout male guppies uh, that also shape. So these two uh, selection pressures are in combat, basically trying to decide which one's going to assert itself over the other. Now, in these experiments, in these large ponds, um, the predation pressure was much higher. Now, in a larger uh, habitat or ecosystem, perhaps that would change. Maybe in a river system, 
the brighter colored guppies can find habitats that they will blend with well and still be attractive. And that was kind of one of his conclusions. Um, now, I'm just brushing on the very top of this topic, and uh, John Endler did far more work than what I'm talking about. All I'm using this for is an example of how different factors can affect the way that a species looks over time. Okay, so we can take this data and extrapolate from it. And what we can see is that if, let's say, two populations of these guppies somehow became geographically isolated and there was no longer gene flow back and forth between the two populations, given enough time and enough changes to the habitat, changes to the predators, etc., you could start to see these two species perhaps speciate into two different breeding populations that would eventually become so different they would no longer be able to interbreed. Okay, it's time to take a little quiz and see how we know and uh, test our knowledge on this. So guys, what I would suggest is that you get out a little piece of paper, um, get something to write with, keep track of your answers, and at the end I'll put up a list of the correct answers. So, here we go to number one. In the Endler's Guppies case study I discussed, the phenotype of the male guppies were influenced by female selection pressure. True or false? In the Endler's Guppies case study I discussed, the phenotype of the male guppies were influenced by disease. True or false? In the Endler's Guppies case study I discussed, the phenotype of the male guppies were influenced by predation. True or false? Endler's Guppies was a study that used a series of experiments to determine blank on the coloration of male guppies. Endler's Guppies was a study that used a series of experiments to determine blank on the coloration of male guppies. Endler's Guppies was a study that used a series of experiments to determine blank on the coloration of male guppies. The breeding experiment below showed that female guppies preferred the males that The breeding experiment below showed that predation was higher in the males that In the breeding experiment below, the population of male guppies that survive to breed will eventually The female endler's guppies prefer males that are very colorful. True or false? Female endler's guppies prefer males that blend well into the habitat. True or false? Predators tend to predate on the males that are colorful more than the males that blend in well with the habitat. True or false? Predators tend to predate on the males that blend in well with the habitat more than the males that are colorful. True or false? If guppies were living on a substrate that was bright yellow, you would expect to find males with a lot of which color? The breeding experiment below showed which selection which pressure was stronger. Okay, here are your answers to all 15 questions. I hope you did well.